Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about how you can scale to millions of vectors with fast retrieval that's affordable, low resource consumption, and also accurate. How do we do this? We're going to do this with a concept called quantization. Now there's also many sub-concepts of quantization, but today we're just going to do a quick intro into the basics of binary quantization. So let's get started. So you have your quadrant vector database, and over time this starts to accumulate more and more vectors until your system starts maxing out its memory, your costs start to skyrocket, what do you do? I mean, if you had 3,072 dimension embeddings and you had millions of them, that could be over 12 gigabytes. So the solution is going to be quantization, not just any type of quantization. Today we're going to talk about binary quantization. And with quantization, there can be many different types of quantization. There's many different flavors of it. But today we're just going to talk about binary quantization, which is your single bit quantization. So if you're looking at maybe 12 gigabytes of data, this can be reduced down to less than 400 megabytes of data all with some methods that help you retain the accuracy of your retrieval. So how this works is you have your 32-bit floating point number. This can be one of your components in your vector embedding, and each bit represents a one or a zero. Now each of those bits can actually be reduced down to a single bit of one or zero. So when you're looking at your whole vector embedding, each component here, each number, can be actually represented as a one or zero in your entire embedding. And with this, you're gonna get 32X compression and up to a 40X speed boost, all with some methods that are gonna help you preserve accuracy. So the way this looks like in the code is you set up your collection in Quadrant and you turn on the binary quantization config. You can see this here at the bottom of the code snippet. It's really quite simple to set up in your code snippet or in your collection code. It's not much work at all. You just have to turn that config on and it's natively available in Quadrant. So what about accuracy? Well, there's three ways that accuracy can be improved using binary quantization. One is oversampling. Now oversampling allows you to preserve the semantic richness of your quantized vectors but it does increase the computational cost. However, it will improve your accuracy. We'll go over some oversampling results in a second. But before that, let's talk about rescoring, which is another method to improve accuracy. Now, rescoring is after you take your initial retrieval, you're going to actually take the attached 32-bit, the non-quantized vectors, the 32-bit floating point numbers that are attached to the quantized vectors, and then you're going to do a similarity search on that for a better score. And then the third way is by limiting the search limits. So we found uh, optimal search limits with our tests, but determining the number of actual vectors that you return in your retrieval will help actually improve the accuracy. So with oversampling, going back to oversampling, what you're looking at is here, the OpenAI text embedding three large and text embedding three small embedding models. Now these embedding models, what you're seeing is the dimensions here are for the large model, and then the red, purple, and brown one are for the small model. And as we see with the oversampling level going up from two to three, all the way from one to three, as we increase oversampling, the accuracy also increases. Now in general, your vector embeddings that have larger dimensions are gonna perform better just right out the gate, but it will be improved with oversampling. So that's your 3072 dimension embedding. Now the small embedding model doesn't perform as well, but with oversampling that can increase as well. At some point, your small embedding model, which is the 1536 brown line, it actually exceeds the accuracy of your text embedding large model. So Overall, you're looking at larger dimensions and larger models are going to improve accuracy. With rescoring, you're seeing here that the purple bars have the rescored retrieved vectors and they are scoring higher than the blue bars, which are not rescored. They're scoring higher with the better accuracy by having that rescoring method applied to them. And as we increase on the x-axis, we can see that with 50 vectors retrieved in our search limit, we're getting 100% accuracy. And setting this up in your code is quite simple. You can see here in our search code snippet that we can turn the quantization parameters on 
for rescore, and for oversampling. So what are the benefits of using binary quantization? Now the first, as we've already discussed, is a reduced storage footprint, getting up to 32x compression with your binary quantized vectors. The second is enhanced speed of data retrieval. Smaller vectors generally return much faster than larger vectors. And the third is an accelerated search process. Because distance calculations are on their quantized vectors, these bitwise operations are more efficient and they can make your search much faster. So when not to use it. The first example when you don't want to use it is when your vector components are not zero centered around the mean. So if you look at a normal distribution of your vector components, the individual numbers and your vector embedding, they should be zero centered and around the mean. Now, if they are not zero centered around the mean, if they have a left skew or a right skew, you may want to use a different scalar quantization method or product quantization method or different binary quantization method. You don't want to use the one bit binary quantization method. Now, there are different examples of embedding models that do have the zero centeredness. I'm going to cover that in a second. But before I do, we also want to talk about Euclidean distance. You don't want to use Euclidean distance as your similarity method when you're using binary quantization because that prioritizes magnitude as opposed to sign. You want to use this with cosine similarity or dot, prox, dot product similarity. Now the third example is if your vector dimensions are less than 1024 dimensions, then you want to use two bit or one and a half bit binary quantization or look at the scalar product quantization methods. But if they're smaller vectors, there's just not enough semantic richness to do the binary quantization. So you want to avoid this with really small embeddings. Now, here are some examples of some compatible embedding models that work with binary quantization. These all come out of the box with zero centeredness around the mean. So these are your open AI embeddings from A to 002 upwards. This is your Mistral embeddings. This is your Cohere embeddings from version two and version three. Your, this is also your uh, Gemini embeddings. Now we did some tests with these with oversampling and um, dimensions as you can see on the table and you can see some very high recall rates. So the main takeaways here is that quantization can really improve your vector retrieval. There's many different flavors of quantization, product, scalar, binary, and even within binary, you have one bit, one and a half bit, and two bit binary quantization, but they can all improve your compression and your speed that helps you reduce costs. And with the methods shown in this video, you can increase your accuracy. Now to keep in mind, if you are going to use binary quantization, you might want to do an AB test with binary quantized results to see if you're getting that zero centeredness in your embeddings. And also if you're getting that uh, results that you want in the recall and the accuracy that you need. So overall, it can be a great and powerful tool. We'll cover some advanced topics with quantization in some other videos, but that'll do it for today with just a quick intro. Hope you enjoyed it.